Hello and welcome back to my RC channel, I'm Andy RC and today I'm going to be taking a look at the Diatone GTR 349. This is being dubbed as the fastest 3 inch production model that money can buy, so let's see if my results match those claims. Now, the fastest 3 inch production model that I've ever flown, or should I say ready to fly model, was the Skyzone S140. I say was because I don't think they are making it anymore. And it got 112 mile per hour last year. Now this one is boasting claims very similar, but it's got slightly different motors. And in the end, speed doesn't really matter. I think what's important to take away from this is that the three inch class is well outperforming the five inch class. And I've got no idea why we aren't running these in races rather than 5 inch models because they are clearly quicker and they can slow down quicker and speed up quicker as well. They can also fly for longer. So I'm going to be testing this guy today on this Tattoo R-Line 850 milliamp 4S battery and if you absolutely thrash it you will get a three minute flight time with this, whereas the five inch models on 4S and even on 6S are struggling to get two minutes. So if you take it easy with one of these batteries, you can get over a four minute flight time. So I'm not sure why we are sticking to five inch when it comes to racing. I mean, as a spectacle from line of sight, they are just little dots anyway. So why not make them smaller dots? if they can be faster. I know if I was racing, I'd certainly be using one of these guys, even though I probably wouldn't win because of my skill level. Now this guy is pretty cheap at 107 GBP and I'll link it in the below because the price may be cheaper in your country. I'll also have a coupon for this as well as other coupons as well. I hope you guys have been finding use for those. Although sometimes they don't work, it does depend on what country you live in because shipping costs and things like that is taken into consideration when it comes to discounts. But they do a Unify version, which is going to be more expensive, and they also do a split mini version as well. However, I don't think that one's going to be very good because you're definitely going to get the props in shot with that one. And for me, the split mini is all about freestyle and getting the props out of shot, but that's up to you whether you want to make that choice or not. So with the props, a receiver installed and the battery strap, it weighs 140 grams. And then the R-Line 850 milliamp 4S battery weighs 107 grams. So that makes the pairing 247 grams. So it's under that magic 250 gram figure. But to compare the weight with the others, we have got the Sky Zone, which is a little bit lighter actually, at 137 grams. Then the GTM3, which you can still buy, weighs 136 grams. So despite all of this aluminium and also the Unify, it's actually still lighter than this guy. I didn't review this guy with these props, by the way. These are the Dow 3056 and they don't produce as much thrust as the ones that came with this, which are the Gemfan Flash 3052. These are also the Gemfan Flash 3052, but I believe they are going to be changing the props out and supplying a 3028 for beginners because they want to aim this guy at beginners for some reason. I don't get that. For me, this is a power machine. By the way, this guy with these props on got a consistent 107 mile per hour. And it's pretty much got the same components really, apart from the frame of course, and also the motors. These are Sunny Sky branded motors and these are Mamba motors. So I'll take a look at those in a minute. SPC Maker also had a go at making a fast 3 inch copter. It's also discontinued, I believe. It was called the 140X and it reached 108 mile per hour, 
with the same props and the same motors as the S140. This one weighs 141 grams, so against this one, 137 grams. I can't really see that being the reason why it was slower. I think maybe the fact that it has a different stack could have something to do with it. So let's take a closer look at this guy. The frame is a unibody and it's a squished X. So if I put it on its side, it should look like a stretched X. And then from the top, we can see that it's squished. The motors are Mamba branded and they are a 1408 4000 kV brushless motor with a naked bottom, which interestingly is the same specification as the Sunny Sky motors that are on the GTM3. So again, 1408 4000 kV, just a different brand. The propellers, as I mentioned, are the Gemfan Flash 3052. However, they are going to be replacing them with some 3028s, which I think is the wrong idea. And it's definitely not going to be the fastest production 3-inch model when they do that. However, you can easily switch the props out and you could argue that props are expendable, so that doesn't really count. In fact, when I reviewed the Skyzone S140, it only did its top speed by putting the Gemfan Flash props on there. However, Stu from UAV Futures got 113 mile per hour out of this guy. And that's really impressive. And he made what he called a small change, but I think it's quite a big change. He chopped off the connector and put an XT60 connector on there. Now, to me, maybe changing the props doesn't stop it from being a production version, but certainly switching out the connector is not how it came out of the box. So I'm gonna be testing the speed of this guy with the XT30 connector, and then maybe at a later date, I could switch it out for an XT60, and we can see if we have any improvements. The guts of the copter is the Mamba stack. So we've got the F25 ESCs. So they are a D-Shot 600 BL Halley S 4 in 125 amp ESC. Then we have got the F405 flight controller capable of 8K, 8K. And it did need a little bit of setup in there. So for some reason, air mode wasn't selected. And the PIDs look a little bit high for a model of this weight and power. So I think I'm probably going to have to change that. And I've changed a couple of things on the on-screen display as well. But in general, yeah, it did need a full setup. So you're going to need to be accustomed to beta flight with this guy. I wouldn't say this was a beginner model whatsoever. And then above that, as I mentioned, we've got the Runcam TX200U. It is switchable up to 200 milliwatts, but it does come locked out of the box at 25 milliwatt. So if I turn it around, we've got a button there and you have to hold the button down and plug your battery in and wait for 10 seconds until the red light goes solid and then that unlocks it and you can use up to 200 milliwatt. And it's also a plug and fly model. So it comes with this connector here. And because we've got the 200 U at the top. There is no space for a receiver whatsoever. Now, it actually took me some time to realize that this little JST connector that they provide with all of their models is designed to plug directly into the FR Sky RXSR. And as you can see, they provide a cable tie and that fits just nicely at the back. And they've also provided more cable ties. So I've put the antennas on the arms I couldn't figure out anywhere else to put it because we are really short on space and again they have cable tied down the linear antenna in a horizontal position which isn't ideal Again, I've explained this in other videos, but we learned it from the Hubson H107D that if you have your linear antenna horizontal, then you will lose range from having it vertical. So coming up with 
a way of having it vertical, I guess, would be very easy. You could just put a cable tie through here and have it sticking up, have a bit of heat shrink around it, and that would help a great deal with reception, I think. Ever since finding out that this connector is designed to plug directly into a RXSR, it always disappointed me that they cut off the telemetry wire when it has got a spare UART, so they could quite easily solder that up. But if you want telemetry from your RXSR other than RSSI, then you are going to have to solder that up yourself. So finally, we have got the camera at the front, which is a Runcam Swift Micro, and it's got a 2.1 millimeter lens, and it's quite nicely protected up the front there. This has got the translucent cover on it, but it also comes with two other covers. So you've got black and white, so you can choose, or if you break one of these, then you've got a spare. So that's pretty nice. We've also got a little connector down here as well, a little tiny JST connector, and that's actually for plugging a buzzer in. So it doesn't come fitted with a buzzer, but they do provide one. So this is the spares bag I guess you could say or the extras bag so we have got some of these silicon strips here and I'm glad to say that this time they actually do fit and they are thicker than the screws because the majority of the screws are recessed so even the motors can you see those fit flush and there also must be a cutout for whether it's a hex screw or a c-clip under there because there's no hole there so that's going to protect it from mud so that's quite nice yeah these screws stick out a little bit but we can put this silicon mat on here so they come in strips and then your battery won't slip so that's a real nice touch for some reason i had two extra cable ties just loose i don't know whether it was their idea to somehow mount the antennas using them because they were both on the same side another thing i had to change as well was the battery strap so it came with a battery strap that would not fit around a 4s battery it was also fitted really strangely as well so yeah you get this longer battery strap in the package which fits this 4s 850 milliamp battery but i had to reroute it because it was just completely placed wrong so let's see what we've got left in the package. I've got a couple of spare cable ties and we've got a bunch of screws. This seems to be the standard diatone kit. So we've got various different sizes there, I guess for spares and they've also got Loctite on them. And then this is the buzzer that I was talking about and we've got two tiny nylon nuts and we've also got the opposite end of an XT30 connector I guess that is for your charger and then we've got a spare ESC connector so that goes from your ESCs to your flight controller which is a nice touch you are also given a bunch of stickers and we've got some information about the Mamba stack and then we've got this yellow card and it's telling you all about diatone.hk so just a couple of other nice touches the wires of the motors are silicon and the stack is actually soft mounted so we shouldn't have any vibration issues and of course we have got a very tiny 47 microfarad low ESR capacitor to reduce noise and that is on the 5 volt rail so let's take a look at some FPV footage and straight away I can see that the voltage scaling is slightly out by just a couple of points that's easily correctable in beta flight let's do a speed run so 104 mile per hour on the first run now usually your first run is not your fastest run because the battery has to warm up in fact sometimes the fastest runs are towards the end of the flight so we've got a second speed run there and we've got 104 mile per hour 
and then 86 mile per hour on the way back but this radar trap is directional so once it's past it from the other end then it stops recording the speed so i did have to change the pids i'll overlay the pids for you i felt like i got a really good pid tune out of it let's do another speed run and see what we get 101 mile per hour and i went further that time so it's actually getting slower that is really strange because there's no excuse it is flat calm and I'm not getting the same results that Stu was getting. This thing is really cool to fly though. So if you aren't too fussed about the fact that I'm not getting the top speeds out of it, it's still a really fast machine and I would not call it a beginner model whatsoever. Something else that's interesting is let's check out the voltage sag on these punches. So it really didn't drop that much. So a reason to switch to an XT60 connector would be to allow more current to flow, but it's actually not sagging as much as the other models that went faster than this. So that makes me think that actually switching it out to an XT60 might not be the answer. I wouldn't rule it out though. By the way, the current meter isn't working whatsoever. So, yeah, 104 mile per hour. So it's definitely consistent, but yeah, it's not the speed that Stu was getting on his radar gun that he has got. Yeah, this is a 850 milliamp battery, and yeah, it's showing a thousand milliamp. And with this stack, I have tried to calibrate it on other models and it just doesn't work so i would disable that i've also taken away the average voltage and put the amp in there which i wouldn't recommend because it doesn't work but that always puts me off the average voltage but i've been thrashing this guy and we've still got a three minute flight time but this battery has had just 10 cycles through it so it's dropped off really quickly so don't do that let me do that for you instead so these results really left me scratching my head and by the way that was not the only flight that i did with this model either i put four batteries through this thing and every single time 104 mile per hour was the top speed so i got thinking about the time of year that it is so it's winter coming up to spring here and it was three degrees c so very cold and cold air is denser than warmer air so Stu from uav futures is based in australia and it's summer there so i thought maybe there's something in that so i thought well if i grab the sky zone s140 and do a speed run on the same day and i can't replicate that 112 mile per hour that it got then that is the reason it's because of the air density and it's more difficult to penetrate and that's why i'm not getting the same speeds so with an identical battery i took the s140 out with around about the same number of cycles again zero wind and i did the speed runs so this is the first one and we have 107 mile per hour and already we are quicker than the GTR 349 and it's just getting started this is a carbon copy of what it was like in the summer so let's try again so 107 again but look at that voltage sag on the same battery it's going down to 12 volts and 13 volts there on the way back and 81 mile per hour it picked that up as well let's try another run so 108 mile per hour and the voltage dropped to 12 volts. So yeah, it seems like it's not pulling as many amps on the GTR 349 as this one. So let's just keep going. So 110 mile per hour it is just getting faster. So I'm kind of having to rule out the temperature difference. So let's see if we can actually get that 112 mile per hour figure that I got. Yes, 112. 
on a three degree C day compared to last year when I did it in the summer. So I have to say that with my equipment that I've got, that the GTR 349 is not the fastest model. By the way, I'm getting more break up with this model because I'm running it at 25 milliwatt. So yeah, it's behind me at the moment and I can barely see a thing, but even towards the end of the battery. So yeah, look, we're coming down to 14 volts. It's still a quicker model. So I don't know what is going on here really. It could just be the equipment that we are using, but my results are definitely different than what Stu's getting. Look at that, 110 mile per hour at the end of the battery where it's 14 volts. I need to come in for a landing in a minute, but I want to show you the full flight so that you can see that there's no tampering or anything like that because, you know, I've got no agenda here. I wanted the GTR to be the quickest. And look at that, down to 11 volts and still 103 mile per hour. Yeah. That's why I added the RXSR because it's an expensive receiver. I wanted it to be the quickest three inch, but for me, it is not. So to conclude from my findings, the Diatone GTR349 is not the fastest production three inch model you can buy. Ironically, it is the Diatone GTM3 because it's the only one that you can buy. Now, I've heard that this guy potentially is gonna be replacing this guy, but at the making of this video, you can still buy this guy. And if you go back and watch the review, it consistently hit 107 mile per hour every time. And it's a little bit more expensive because we've got the Unify. And, you know, speed isn't that important, I suppose. It's down to skill as well. But, you know, having the best and fastest capable copter is definitely going to help. As for why I don't think I got the same speeds as Stu, it could just be down to the calibration of my radar. You see, I have my radar in a fixed position and I've played around with a lot of radar guns and I found with the radar guns that movement can actually affect the outcome of the speed results. So if you take one of those speed guns and move them fast like that, it will actually show a speed. So if you are holding it and a copter is coming towards you and you sort of move it or jerk it, then maybe it could get a different speed. However, I'm not going to rule out that chopping the XT30 connector off and replacing it with an XT60 connector and using a battery like this with a really thick wire and an XT60 on the other end is going to make it a lot faster. However, from the results that I saw, I would doubt that. And unfortunately, it's going to be some time before I'm going to be able to do that test because out of all of this thrashing with this copter, one of the motors burnt up. Now, I talked to Diatome and they say they have not had a single case of a motor burning up, but I will show you one of these motors will no longer arm. And I think it's the motor because the smell is coming from the motor and not the ESC. So let me know in the comments if that is the case because a lot of people must have bought this copter because Stu's video has got a lot of views. So on that bombshell, it is time to end. Thank you so much for watching. If you can afford to do so, then I will link to my Patreon in the below because these type of tests absolutely destroy these batteries. I would not recommend you guys doing it whatsoever. And as always, thanks so much for watching. Please continue to subscribe. Cheers.